Hello everyone, this is Larry Tippin, President of the Board of the Putnam County Museum of Greencastle, Indiana. This presentation will serve as our 2020 annual meeting. The live meeting, which we had scheduled for March 22nd, 2020, was postponed due to concerns from the COVID-19. We were hoping to have the presentation or the meeting live, but we're never able to give it. So we're going to do this in lieu of the live meeting, and this will serve as our 2020 annual meeting satisfy requirements of our bylaws that we hold annual meeting. We're going to present the 2019 financial statements and the 2019 highlights of the museum. Since no board member's terms are expiring, no proposed changes to bylaws have been uh, proposed or on the table or no other official business. There's no action required by the members of the museum at this time. This is informational. Slate of officers were approved by the museum board at the March 20th, 2019 regular meeting consisting of President Larry Tippin, myself, Vice President Gwen Morris, Secretary Murray Zirkel, Treasurer Mary Pride. We have an 11 member board of directors to govern the affairs of the museum. The museum bylaws indicate that we're to have nine to 13 members. We currently have 11, consisting of Steve Bonney, Alice Greenberg, Margaret Kenton, Gwen Morris, Sue Murray, Murray Pride, Mike Sullivan, Vicki Tim, Larry Tippin, Jordan Vaughn, Murray Zirkel. The board meets the third Wednesday of each month at the museum at six o'clock. Members are welcome. However, you would want to call ahead to make sure we're actually having a meeting at the museum. Like many organizations, we have been meeting remotely from the greater part of 2020. We hope to be able to have live meetings again as soon as practical. The board of the museum is all assisted by various committees as designated in the bylaws of the museum. The executive committee consists of the officers, the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. The executive committee is authorized to meet and take action between board meetings as authorized in the museum bylaws. Also have a finance committee chaired by the treasurer, Murray Pride. Other members are Jim Inslee, Mike Sullivan, and Kevin Miller. The finance committee is responsible for the preparation of the annual budget. And also this committee reports performance of your organization and meetings. It budgeted revenues and expenses to the board. Governance committee consists of Sue Murray Ken Hickey. This committee is responsible for board recruitment, orienting new board members, self-assessment, and board management. Membership committee, chaired by Vicki Tim, also includes Steve Bonney, Alice Greenberg, and Margaret Kenton. This committee determines the benefits available to members and establishes dues for the various categories of membership also responsible for planning the annual meeting. The program committee consists of several different divisions, including the exhibit committee, which consists of Mickey Meehan, Gwen Morris, Murray Zirkel, Jordan Vaughn, Warren Macy. Also part of the program committee, technology and education, which are both currently vacant. This committee is responsible for the day-to-day -day activities that result in the development and implementation of the museum's programs and outreach. Communications Committee also has several parts. Publications, which consists primarily of our quarterly newsletter called The Arch, chaired by Steve Bonney, 
Doshans and media portion of this committee currently vacant. This committee is responsible for advocating the mission of the museum to the general public. In addition to the standing committees, we have several ad hoc committees, one of which is a strategic planning committee chaired by Gwen Morris, vice president of the board. This committee is responsible for developing and updating existing strategic plan also monitor the implementation of the plan and report on its progress to the full board. Capital campaign committee is currently vacant. This committee is responsible to raise funds for capital campaign, usually which occurs once a decade or as necessary. Fundraising committee is also currently vacant. Things uh, such as the old trail-in dinners, gift shop, new events, and other items that say fall under the fundraising committee. So we're going to officially open the 2020 annual meeting in two parts, part one being the official business, including the approval of the 2019 annual meeting, which was held March 17, 2019. The minutes are available on request and were also presented in the April 2020 arch. Since we're not sitting across the table from each other, we can't entertain motions. We're going to approve officially the 2019 annual meeting minutes by acclamation of the members. Also included in the in the, Mar the April 2020 arch was balance sheet. December 31st, 2019, with comparative amounts for 2018. I'm going to present those here also. And uh, I could not get it on one slide, so I'm going to split it up into three different slides. So this may look a little bit unusual. The balance sheet consists of various current assets, including bank accounts, cash on hand, totaling 178000 536.75 at December 31st, 2019. And long term assets, which include fixed assets or capital assets, including fixtures, exhibits, and equipment, leasehold improvements, and the new facility of a total of 652.237.55 and other long term assets, bringing the total assets up to 831. 73407 as of December 31st, 2019. We have no short term liabilities. We're current in all our accounts, accounts, no accounts payable or any other short term liabilities. We only have long term liabilities, which at December 31st, 2019 was to Tim Investments LLC for just over 400000 the equity, including net income of 31,264.41, totals 425,120,80 for total liabilities and equity of 831,734.07. Also, we we'll present the profit and loss or income statement for the calendar year 2019. Also, had to split this up into three different slides for presentation purposes. You can stop this presentation anytime, pause it, or go back if you'd like to see something that I've gone too fast for. Our income consists primarily of donations and endowment payout from the Putnam County Community Foundation, the various endowments we have. I want to make sure that we thank all the donors who donated. It's very significant that you do so, and we appreciate it very much. All donations, large and small, are very much appreciated. As our membership dues, you see that we had membership dues of just over 18,000. So we like to encourage people to, or members, to renew their membership. And if you know anybody that might be interested, consider membership. So we have a gross profit after our cross of goods sold of 192,806.11. The expenses are uh, detailed fairly extensively, so they consist of two different parts for presentation purposes. 
listed alphabetically, kind of expenses you'd expect for an organization like this, insurance of 6,000, interest expense, payroll of just over 70,000. Going to the next slide, pause if you'd like to read them. Also, we have existing as publications, repairs and maintenance, utilities, and again, other expenses that you would expect of a museum this size for a net income of $31,264.41. Part two of this 2020 annual meeting are the 2019 highlights for the museum. The Putnam County Museum has made great strides since its exception in 2003 in keeping with our mission to collect, preserve, and interpret the national historical natural, historical, and cultural heritage of the county. Our first item in session in our collection was an oil painting of the train depot on the north side of Greencastle by John Howard in 2004. Our collection includes a wide variety of items, large and small. As of December 31st, 2019, we had just over 4,000 objects consisting of 1,177 photos, 31 archival items, and just over a thousand publications in our library. The staff, the museum staff, picked the yuckiest item in its collection as being petrified bread, which is a real thing. You see this partial loaf of bread we keep in a box. The container is well preserved, although I don't think we'll slice into it and share it today. 2019 highlights also include the staff has picked a symphonia music box that actually works as the most fascinating item in our collection and like supports for a wheelchair that turn into a gurney as the most obscure item. The oldest objects in our collection are an 1832 deed, an actual deed, 80 acres, Thomas Blackwell, and an 1834 mother of pearl handled butter knives. We have given a variety of programs and hosted many events, including 172 students participated in the student art show <clears throat> 2019, 400 were attendants for the annual student art show and awards show and awards presentation. We have sold 283 books written by local author Malcolm Romine and have three Elisha Calgo paintings, which have been donated to the museum. We have 212 current members represented by 11 board members. Welcome to over 4,000 visitors in 2019, including several international visitors, which is very interesting, and over 30 groups currently use the facility. In addition to the executive director, we have three part-time staff members were assisted by four DePaul University interns and three volunteer carpenters. We also have eight docents in a current rotation as of December 31st, 2019. In 2019, we hosted a Roaring Twenties mystery party, the Kamek founding family. We inaugurated the Tiny Towns and Vantage Villages monthly presentation by County Historian Larry Tippin. We're currently not able to present these. So if you missed any of those, we've recorded the ones we already presented and the ones we did not have an opportunity to present. They're on YouTube. You can search for it under the Putnam County Museum for those. We had a tremendous Lego birthday party in collaboration with the Greencastle Parks and Rec Department and the Indy Brick Association or organization. 250 were in attendance for that. Admission was canned good items for the senior citizens food pantry, the senior center. More than 800 cans and other goods were collected at that event. We held member and community meetings to discuss producing an updated history of Putnam County and other county bicentennial celebratory events. An editorial committee was formed for that. The Big Walnut Bird Club Raptor presentation given by the Indiana State Department of Natural Resources had 125 people in attendance. The Indiana Extension Homemakers Association District 7 
spring district meeting was held at the museum with 150 in attendance. Oral history collection interviews were conducted and transcribed by DePaul literature, literature students. Harry Brown was the instructor. Live demonstrations entertained and educated third graders from South Putnam and Greencastle school districts. We had full wool fiber demonstrations, spinning and weaving, and blacksmithing. The Pacific and Eastern Model Railroad Club ran their immense train layout and talked about the importance of the railroads and the trains to Putnam County. Two blacksmiths had items children could pass around while they worked on creating chain links, a ladle, and tiny swords from gutter spikes. Children will really love that. 2019, we hosted an open house of Malcolm Romine's 90th birthday, which was well attended, very nice event. Also, the third annual antique tractor show. We hosted several memories get togethers for the Greencastle Facebook group devoted to city history. Also, we're a site for nature play day efforts, as well as student curated exhibits on nitroglycerin. The Newman Family, the Horse Thief Detective Association, Jerry Gammons Pine Needle Weavings, Leo Cox Carnegie, who's a Carnegie Medal winner, we have a display for that. The staff curated quilts were exhibited, also piggy banks from lo local banks over the years. The South Putnam High School Spanish, Spanish Club curated display, their friends also hosted the DePaul Nature Park 360 art exhibit, as well as the Bearing Witness 88 Cores Plus Paradise and its Dark Side, curated by Martha Donovan. Opta, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Martha. This exhibit garnered PBS attention. Organizations that use facility of the museum during 2019 included the Putnam County Antique Tractor and Machinery Association, So Many Stitchers Extension Club, Family, Friends, and Fun Extension Club, Stitch and Time Extension Club, Silver Lining Players, 4-H Sewing Project Workshops, Pacific and Eastern Modern Railroad, Railroad Club, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Putnam County, Spinners and Weavers, Over the Teacups, PEO, DAR, St. Paul's Women's Guild, First Christian Prime Timers, The Castle, Putnam County Community Foundation, Dining in the Dark, Green Castle, Putnam County Development, Girl Scouts. The facility is also used for three celebrations of life, a bridal shower, and a baby shower. Other items of note, the Putnam County Museum participated in the Share the Dream program for increasing our endowment at the Putnam County Community Foundation. Besides reaching our goal of $3,000 received, an additional $1,000 mass from the founding, uh, foundation because we had the largest number of unique givers. Our Fab 25 campaign reached more than 40 uh, raised more than $41,000 for a building improvement fund. Also raised more than $20,000 selling tax credits to donors. Other items of note, Gwen Morris wrote a successful grant to the Putnam County Community Foundation for restoration and preservation of the works of Putnam County artist, Elisha Cowgill. Lynn Ayers started working with our textiles, increasing preservation endeavors, evaluating, repairing, and condition reporting. Scorpions Coating donated EV free reflective film to our windows to cut down on the glare of the late afternoon sun. Search for newsletter editor resulted board member Larry Tippin stepping forward to fill the position succeeded in late 2019 by board member Steve Bonney. The newsletter have been dormant for a period of time. We have it going again now. We installed security camera system that records. We also installed heaters in the restroom. 
Items donated in 2019, an extensive silver coffee and tea service that belonged to James Franklin Darnall, who was born and raised in Greencastle. He was an active, he was active politically and was appointed ambassador to the Mexican state, Mexican state of Sonora by President McKinley. This service is currently on display. Also a Garrett Boone painting by the Burr House uh, and Burrhouse Butterfly donated by Jack and Whitley Morrow. This is a photo of the Darnell Tea and Coffee Service. If you'd like to come in the museum to see it, it's really neat. Also in 2019, we had donated a Symphonia Standing Music Box with 19 Pierce disc recordings of classical selections, gift of Sally and Richard Sunkel. Order Potter Pieces by Richard Burkett, Gifts of the Artist, and a cardboard menu from Green Castle, Gifts of Debbie Wetchell. This is a photo of the front of the Symphonia music box. Very nice wooden case with a really neat photo inside of the top cover. And then looking down on it, you see this unique disc of the music that's recorded and actually plays. It's a very nice, very unique item. Also donated in 2019, a working McLean telephone gift of Russ and Jan Hessler. A North Putnam High School letter jacket from the first year of the North Putnam Consolidation, gift of Kim Bishong, who was a member of that class, of the first class of North Putnam, the 1969-1970 class, Original wooden change drawer from Vandalia Railroad Station, gift of Denise Bannon. Here is two of the three pages of the Cream Castle menu, drive-in restaurant. You can see that it's south on Indiana 43 in Green Castle. We can have a Queen Burger for 40 cents, a King Burger for 45 if you had a larger appetite, get a burger basket for 50 cents, various other sandwiches, and many beverages which cost a dime. The current facility is 11,000 square feet, but we will be expanding into the recently acquired 14,000 square foot facility in the not too distant future. The board is already planning for that. So far in 2020, in addition to what happened in 2019, we repaired the roof of the new addition and improved the front entrance. We also updated signage at the entrance and added an electronic sign at the main entrance. The parking lot has been resurfaced. A new lighting has been added. We shared in the cost to build a firewall to accommodate a new tenant at the south end of the building, the elite Skyhawks cheer and dance. They will be our renter when we take possession of the entire building. Again, this is as of December 31st, 2019, that has occurred. We had a signing to close on the addition, the new portion, new to us, portion of the building in January of 2020. You see Murray Pride on the left, myself, Larry Tippett on the right, signing that document to acquire the building. The museum board and staff would like to thank all the members, volunteers, and contributors for your patience and support during the past year. It's quite a testament to the efforts of everyone involved, the staff, museum board, and everybody that contributed that we've had a successful year. This concludes the 2020 annual meeting. I want to thank you for your time and your patience. And this is Larry Tippin, board president. Thank you.